right, so here's a quick stock market portfolio update with Questrade. So my total equity in Canadian as of October 16th is 102.465. So in my margin account, I'm currently sitting on 22.58 USD cash. If you look at my positions, I've got a vertical put, so a put credit spread on Netflix at 485.480. Now Netflix has earnings this week, October 20th. So I'm probably gonna hold on to it till after earnings is announced so I can close this trade for a decent profit, hopefully, if Netflix goes up or stays above 485. I got into this trade in the last hours, in the last trading hours of Friday when everything dropped hard. As you can see, Netflix, you can see it, it dropped hard. So I got into this trade because of the drop. And you can see already pre-market it's trading at 541 so maybe there could be an opportunity to close it before earnings but we'll see if it's more than 50 percent maybe i can close it before earnings and then i have a naked put on rocket that i keep rolling right now i've got a strike of 22 expiring november 20th so as long as rocket stays above 22 come november 20th this trade is a winner and even if it doesn't i just keep rolling it for a credit now, if you want to see how much credit I've received from Rocket, I can simply go to Orders, Executed, Filter on RKT. And you can see that I first started off in uh, on August 31st, collected a dollar. And then September 18, collected 50 cents. And then September 25th, collected 31 cents. And then October 2nd, collected uh, 95 cents. Actually, I should be looking at the fill price, not my limit price. So... 95 cents, 33 cents, 53 cents, and a dollar. Now the max capital required for this trade, if I'm doing cash secured put, it would be about the strike times 100. So about 2200 is the capital required for this trade. But if I'm using margin, it's actually much less. It's probably around $300. So you could calculate yourself the return on capital on this. So it's $100, $53, $33, $95 since August 31st. So from September to mid-October, almost end of October, Actually, this one ex expires November 20th, so I would get the full credit of this one either by waiting November till November 20th or if the stock goes up really fast, I can close the trade for almost 90% of the profit. So going back to my positions in my margin account, I've got a Shopify put spread that I also entered at the end of the day on Friday. This one is at a 10, 20, 10, 15 strike, collected I believe 95 cents. Now. Shopify has earnings not this week, but the week after. And usually stocks tend to run up before earnings. So hopefully this trade becomes a winner this week as long as Shopify stays above 1020. And I've got a SPY put spread that I entered after hours actually because ETF options, they trade until 4.15 p.m. So this one got filled, as you can see, 4.05 p.m. So five minutes after the close on Friday. And I got, I entered it for 80 cents. I collected 80 cents at a 340, 335 strike. And it expires October 23rd. So as long as SPY stays above 340, come Friday, this trade becomes a winner. And we can already see pre-market SPY is a little bit higher. So looking now at my TFSA, I've got $526 cash Canadian and 33,000 US cash. Total equity is 7,600 Canadian and 37 US, giving me an overall combined in Canadian 56, almost 57K. And if we look at my positions, it's mostly dividend stocks. So I'm putting $1,000 chunks in dividend stocks. First one, I've got Bell, which is up, but doesn't matter. I'm just going for dividends. I've got Bank of Nova Scotia, but of course, I'm trying to buy it at a, at a good price, of course. So I've got Bank of Nova Scotia that I bought at 54. I've got China Mobile that I bought at 32.52. So this one's down a little bit. I've got Choice Properties that I bought at 12.76. So also down. I've got Gold. This is not a dividend play. This is just wanted to participate in Gold. So I bought it at 179.84, it's at 178.3. Got Manulife, Canadian Insurance Company, I bought it at 18.78, slightly up. Got MMP that I bought at 37, down now 36.72, could have gotten a better entry. Got Pizza Pizza that I bought in at 8.75, down a little bit. And I've got Rio Can that I bought at 13.93, this one's up. So I'm actually up $46 on that one. AT&T I bought at 28.38. It's down to 27.33. Wow, that's pretty low. 
AT&T has been taking a big hit for the past 10 years. Actually, let's look at the chart. I think there's no capital appreciation. Five years, it's actually down five years. This is not good. All right, going back. So the last one is TD at $63. It's trading at $60 right now. And I actually have an order to buy TD if it drops to 56.7. So I've got a good to cancel order, 18 shares at 56.7. So TD is a stock that I'm comfortable averaging down on. If it keeps dropping, I'll just keep buying some more. Dividends on TD is pretty good, 5% right now, but it also has good dividend growth. It, grow, it grows on average 10% per year, the dividend. So in my RSP, I've got two covered call positions, one on IWM, which is the ETF that tracks the Russell 2000, and I've got Virgin Galactic as well. IWM expires October 30th, and Virgin Galactic expires November 20th, and I think Virgin Galactic... Uh, pre-market is already up it's yeah it's at 23.1 so it's already above my short strike of 23 so having a cover call means that the ma my maximum selling price is that strike so the max i can sell this position for is 23 but in return i keep collecting premiums same thing for iwm my max selling price is 152 yet iwm is trading on 162 so i don't take advantage of that price I'm just selling premiums at the, at my cost of 151.6 or 152. Same thing here, selling at around 23. And I just keep collecting premiums until it, as much as I can until I can't anymore. And then I get my capital back and I'll, I'll use it towards something else. So if I go to orders executed, let's look at IWM. And you can see all the credits that I've been receiving at almost every week. So it's kind of fun. I enjoy this. Might not be the best approach. Sometimes buying stocks and leaving it for leaving it with the intention of capital appreciation sometimes might be better because you can get more out of it but i don't like to wait so i prefer to collect premiums up front and who knows maybe it goes up a little bit but then comes back down below 152 so then i was better off selling my call premiums so in that case i don't regret selling my call premiums i would still hold the position but at least i collected so many premiums on while the stock was going up and down up and down Virgin Galactic, I guess, in a few years has potential to be like the next Tesla, maybe, but who knows? I don't know if the technology will work. I don't know if there's really demand for it, but I know the premiums are high. I think it's got good management team, so I'm confident that the stock will always go up, and that's why I bought into it. It actually started off with an earnings trade that went bad, but then the stock eventually recovered. So if we go to orders executed on Virgin Galactic, SPCE executed. So it started off right here. This was an earnings trade. So I bought the stock at around 23.5, but I only paid 22 because I collected $1.50 in premiums. But then the stock dropped below 20. So I ended up selling, um, I had to go all the way out to from August 7th to August 21st to collect only $30. And then from August 21st to September 25th, so only to collect $68. So remember this one, it was the same week I collected $150. This one I'm going several weeks out and I'm collecting very little. That's because the stock dropped. And then this one from September 25th to October 16th collected $40. And then finally from October 16th to November 20th, so this is a month out, collected $200. And now with my position, with the stock being above 23, I can keep rolling it again. I can keep rolling the stock. Maybe I'll go to December. At the same strike, obviously, I won't be able to go to higher strike if I want to collect a credit. And finally, in my RESP, got Intel. Now, this one's a covered call trade as well. I, I initially bought it at 58, but then it dropped. It was last earnings, actually. And then when it dropped, I averaged in by buying some more to reduce my cost. So I bought some more at 48.92 to make my cost, uh, my average cost, 56.25. And I'm actually selling a covered call out of 55 strikes. So you can see over here, 55 strike. I've collected some premiums, not as much as I would like to, but I collected some premiums on the way. And I'm glad that it's it finally started to come back up again. So it's at 54. Uh, I just need it to be above 55, hopefully above 56, but it doesn't matter. My short strike is 55 for November 20th. So even if it's at 56, I don't really take advantage of that. But I'm just going to keep collecting premiums again. I'm going to keep selling calls at a 55 strike as much as I can until there's enough premiums and then I get my capital back. So if I go back to orders executed, you could see I started off 
See, the first trade doesn't show because it's over three months. But you can see that at some point I went from July 24th to July 31st, collected $24 only. And then I've got another and I've got another week where I only collected $27 and another week where I only collected $30. Actually, this one I had to go further than a week between August 7th and September 25th, collected only $30. And then from October, from September 25th to October 23rd, collected $65. And then finally, from October 23rd to November 20th, collected $102. So premiums aren't this high. I did collect a dividend payment from this, so not bad. I think around $50 of dividends, so not bad. But yeah, so the intention is to keep selling premiums as much as I can until I get my capital back. And I've got 20 shares alone here. So this was just used to bring my cost average price lower. And I guess when Intel goes above 56, I could just sell it and get my capital back. So I've got about 8,000 US cash buying power in my RSP and 1,300 Canadian. Not sure what I want to do with it. I do plan on, it'll most likely be a covered call trade, but not sure which stock it could be Micron, could be uh, AMD, although I think it's it ran up a lot. Could be work as well, Slack. Really not sure yet. If I can get to 10,000 or maybe 11,000, I'd probably do Apple. I think I need 12,000 for that. In my TFSA, I'm gonna continue buying chunks of $1,000 of stocks that pay good dividends, that drop in value, that have attractive prices, and maybe some covered call trades as well. But I have to be careful with my TFSA because I'm actually using my TFSA as collateral to trade in my margin account. Because as you can see, I only have 2,200 US in my margin, but I'm placing option trades in my margin account, and so, my buying power in my margin account really comes from my TFSA. So I have to be careful with my TFSA. I, don't want to, I would not want to see my TFSA drop 30% in value. So that's why I got to be a little bit more picky in my TFSA. If I do 100 shares of Apple and do a covered call trade on it and it drops 20%, it's going to affect my buying power in my margin account. So you probably noticed this negative amount here in my TFSA under Canadian buying power. It's most likely because my TFSA is linked to my margin account. Although my trades in my margin account are all US based, for some for some reason it affects the Canadian side of my TFSA. All right, so if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Like always, if you can open an account with QuestTrade to trade on the stock market, use my referral link below to get $50 in free trades. Also check out the other referral links below. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button, share with a friend and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.